A new study has hit the headlines. It shows that reducing saturated fat does nothing to protect your heart. Now that may surprise some people as we've been told for decades that we need to reduce our saturated fat because the evidence was supposedly clear that it was harmful for our, he our heart health, right? Well, so what's the truth? And, and how do we know if it's you know, safe to eat saturated fat? Well, I mean, in truth, when it comes to taking charge of your health, none of this matters. The study I'm talking about today doesn't matter. None of these recommendations matter. Now that's a great way to, to keep you watching, right? To tell you that nothing matters, but, but hang in there, because it's true. Because these studies are all asking the wrong questions. It's hard to get a helpful answer when you don't ask helpful questions. And that's the case here. But it's worth going through the basics of the study and more importantly, understanding what the study teaches us about maybe what we should be doing instead, what questions we should be asking instead, and how that can impact our overall health. So the newest study demonstrates how, I guess you can see how incredibly difficult it is to analyze nutrition research and have any idea how it applies to us as individuals, right? Because that's the point of research. The research is to, to give us information that we can use to, to improve our health or as doctors to improve the health of our patients. So this meta-analysis um, was published in the Japan Medical Association Journal, and it looked at nine randomized controlled trials so right off the bat, we see it's the the it's not the lower quality nutritional epidemiology studies that have done very little to help us understand nutrition. But it's the intervention studies, right, where half the group ate, you know, quote unquote, normally, and the other group reduced their saturated fat. So in the end, pooling all nine of these randomized controlled trials, there was no difference between the groups who ate more or less saturated fat for heart attacks, heart-related death, or death from any cause. So if you want to know if the recommendation to reduce saturated fat is supported by randomized, randomized controlled trials, then you can pretty much stop right here because it isn't. But, but there are more lessons we can learn from this study, which can help us reframe the question to better inform our health. Now, one of the things that was really interesting, I, I thought about the study, there was a section where they compared their meta-analysis to other meta-analyses that were done. And they mentioned how like a prior one from um, Dr. Mazafarian and his colleagues actually included some non-randomized study and excluded two of the randomized studies that were used in this current analysis. So, and the authors point out that the Mazafarian paper actually didn't describe their selection process. So I guess we don't know why they included or excluded different different studies, but it shows that I guess by changing what studies you do include or exclude, you can kind of cook the results to fit what you wanted to show, which really kind of makes you question a lot of this. And so they also mentioned the, the Hooper review from um, the Cochrane review, and that concluded there was no difference in cardiac or overall mortality for saturated fat intake, but showed a very small reduction in cardiac events for those who reduced their saturated fat. And the authors mentioned how the analysis included multiple studies where cardiac events or mortality were not primary endpoints and how that may impact the analysis. So we can start to see how not all meta-analyses are created equal. How which studies are included or excluded is a crucial component to understand the results. And I, for one, I wouldn't take any paper seriously, I guess, if they didn't describe the process of, of why they included or excluded papers. And even then, we have to question how much we can rely on these studies. So that leads me to the bigger problem, right? So I sort of buried the lead here, but when are we going to realize that saturated fat is not one thing and not all dietary patterns are the same when it comes to how our body processes saturated fat containing foods? So a perfect example, right? Is the saturated fat we're talking about a, a dessert, you know, pie crust with plenty of sugar and, and, you know, that's saturated fat? Or is it a lasagna with refined grain noodles and meat sauce with plenty of sugar? That's considered saturated fat. Or is it a filet or ribeye with a side of cauliflower, broccoli, and avocado, right? Those are all considered saturated fat, but they're very different in their macronutrient composition, in their amount of processing, in their sugar content, and so forth, right? And we can break saturated fat down even further. So let's look at dairy, right? Dairy tends to be considered high in saturated fat, but studies indicate it has a net positive or at worst, a neutral effect on cardiovascular health. And are we talking about stearic acid, palmitic acid, lauric acid, or something else? Right? These are all different types of saturated fat. So saturated fat is not one thing. So I, 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 I don't 
want to confuse things, but we can also add to the mix another recent observational study published in the European Journal of Clinical Nutrition that suggested eating more butter was associated with lower cardiometabolic risk compared to margarine or even things like avocado oil, canola oil, etc. So again, this can get confusing, but the point is I want to highlight the folly. I mean, I can't think of a better word than just folly of pretending that we know that saturated fats are harmful for our health or the folly that we know limiting saturated fats is helpful and that limiting saturated fats has been a key component of our dietary guidelines for decades. It's time to realize, in my opinion, that this advice doesn't help anyone. Instead, we need to advise people to eat a dietary pattern that improves their overall metabolic health. And for many people, that can include saturated fat containing foods. It doesn't have to, but it absolutely can contain those foods, especially when they're whole food sources in an otherwise low carb diet. So I think history has shown we need to avoid the high carb, high fat, high calorie diet, but that doesn't mean all saturated fat in every diet is harmful, not even close. So let's agree that these studies aren't very helpful when it comes to me as an individual or me as a clinician advising my patients. And that high quality evidence does not support limiting saturated fats. Let's get that out of our dietary guidelines and instead focus on dietary patterns that improve our overall health and our metabolic health and patterns that we can maintain and enjoy for years or decades to come. All right, thank you for watching. I hope that perspective was helpful. And, and for more information on nutrition and metabolic and mental health and these types of, you know, these types of changes in perspective too, you can watch more of our content at Metabolic Mind, including this one, which I hope you enjoy.